Hey, Mom, can you help me with this sound design? Hey, everybody, Will here. How would you like to be able to generate high quality sound effects quickly? In today's video, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do when we generate sounds algorithmically in the Kima sound design language. If you're new here, or even if you're not, please make sure you've rang the bell so that you get notifications of when I post videos. First, we'll take a quick look at what a typical sound design session might look like or sound effects session might look like in a digital audio workstation, which is probably very familiar and something you see in almost every sound design or sound effect tutorial out there. But then we're going to quickly move over to Kima, where I'm going to show you how we no longer need to work that way when we have the power to generate sounds algorithmically. I hope you'll find this video useful, and if not, eh, go ahead and watch it anyway. All right, so I'm here in Pro Tools with a sound design, sound effects editing session called up. Probably a pretty familiar environment for you and for all of us, really, as sound people. And this is, you know, your typical, typical setup here of tracks, regions here. These are my scanner samples. Obviously, I can you know, take and I can mute some of them. I can grid it all and, and all these sorts of things. If I want to change something, I come over here. I got to put in a plug-in, go through all these menus. Maybe you audio suite it if you want to commit to it. In any case, you're dealing with, with sounds that are more or less frozen in a place in time. And then if you want to see them again, you duplicate it and you're always having to do everything sort of manually, manually put a fade on and, and listen to it and make all these sort of changes, which can be awesome. You know, people enjoy working this way and it works and I get it, it makes sense. Um, but I wanna show you another way where we achieve similar results uh, with a ton of layers like this that's much more flexible. It happens much, much quicker and I think you'll agree that it's going to be a lot more fun to create. So that's what I'm going to check, uh, check out with you now over in the Kima sound design environment. All right, so we saw what a sample-based sound effect sound design session might look like in your digital audio workstation. Now I'd like to show you uh, a method that's very similar, works off the same principles of a lot of layers with different uh, sort of fade-ins and fades-out and this kind of thing in Kima. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a prototype with command B called multi sample. I'll double click to open this. Cool. So now, right away, just the default is uh, going to grab all these sample files in the same folder as this pottery break sample. Now what I want to do is put something that's my own in there. So on my disk, I have a sample folder full of things I recorded with a, a janky contact microphone, a 35 millimeter scanner specifically. So what I'm going to do just grab this sample and I can just click inside this parentheses and plunk it right in there alright and so what that's gonna do is grab all these 31 samples that we see in that folder and there they are okay cool so the next parameter field is the index into those samples. So right away I'm going to change this sample to mine. And then I want to make this sound controllable from the iPad. So what I'm going to do is put down here and make it a hot parameter. And down is really, in this case I'm going to show you here in a moment, I'm going to get a replicator involved, is going to say pen down and that means 
Wacom tablet pen, but through the app Kima Control, I can use my fingers, which are functioning like those pen downs. If you had a Wacom tablet, you could use a pen there and achieve these same results. So next thing I'm going to type is a bit of code. Next, random index modulus the size of this folder. So what this is saying is every time my finger goes down on the iPad, we're going to randomly index into this sample folder size there. So any of these samples can be grabbed. Next is the gate field. I want this sound to be gated again by my fingers. So sticking with this same down theme. Scale is the level of the sample. So I'm going to put a one there, just full amplitude for now. Frequency, that looks pretty, uh, pretty intense. I'm going to change it a bit. Uh, again, sticking with the iPad control, I'm going to change this to X so it can be changed in real time. And then one other thing I'm going to do, create one other hot parameter, uh, rate for rate of playback. All right, and then attack time. If I put an exclamation point start, it'll auto fill with this parameter field name, attack time. And same thing I'm gonna do for release time. So just to summarize, I've got my 35 millimeter scanner samples, all 31 of them available. They're indexed or grabbed randomly by my fingers down on the iPad gated by my finger down on the iPad. Each one's going to be at full amplitude. We are going to scale the rate of playback by my finger location on the iPad, which is X on the X axis, left to right. And then we're also going to scale it by this hot parameter rate, which I'll explain in more detail shortly. And then we're going to give uh, attack time and release time for each sample its own uh, ability to be changed uh, as well. All right, so the next thing I want to do is grab the replicator, Command B. And I see this replicator for multi touch pen control. That seems pretty well suited for what we're doing here, so I'll get that open. And then what I want to do is just plunk this sam multi sample we just made and put it right on this sound and then hit OK to replace everything. I can get rid of this and here's our sound. All right. Multi sample with all the parameter fields we just adjusted. And then I'll go into the replicator, make a few changes. Now I've got for the number of copies defaults to four. I'm thankful I have all 10 fingers. And I want to use them here now, so I'm going to put a 10. Left and right, I'm going to leave a level. That means I can adjust the, the overall loudness uh, via that fader that's going to come up. And I notice in my special events, I have X, Y, and Z. That's cool. I notice I have X and uh, down but no Y and Z, and a couple other ones uh, rate and attack time here. So let's make a couple adjustments. I'll get rid of Y and Z. I want attack time in here so that each sample will have its own attack time. And same thing for release time. I'm going to go ahead and leave rate off, so I just have one rate for now, but I'll explain why we could create even more options by putting it into that parameter field. Lastly is this prefix, prefix section. We see 1 to 16, collect I, pen, and I. What this is saying is collect the numbers from 1 to 16 and put them on the end of the word pen. All right, I don't need to go all the way to 16 because I only have 10 copies. So if I make this a 10 and I evaluate it with command Y, we see pen one through pen 10. Perfect, so now what this is saying is, as a prefix, put it before each of these hot parameters, pen one X, 
pen one down, pen one attack time, pen one release time, all the way through pen 10. So each one is going to have its own uh, ability to be changed. All right, so now this sound is ready to go. I'm going to go up to action, record to disk, record them into a single stereo file. Uh, that looks fine. Uh, sound effects, make it version 2. All right, and now this sound is live. Right away, I notice my virtual control surface could be cleaned up a little bit because I have 10 pens, so I'll go to edit, clean up, and instead of having eight here, I can see how 10 looks. Cool, and that helps uh, helps a bit. It's a little off because we have this uh, level here, but in any case, a bit cleaner than it was. If I control click on the camera, this will become my new default. And right away, I notice I have a lot of zeros. This could be good, um, but it could be also nice to just start with a little something. So one way to do that that's nice is to just uh, go to the casino here and roll some dice. And that gives you some, uh, some random values for everything, including pen downs, which leads me to say that you don't even necessarily need a Wacom tablet or an iPad to create a sound like this. You could build it just the same way and then just keep rolling the dice to get new sounds. But let's go ahead and play this now from the iPad and see. And remember, sounds towards the left of the iPad are going to be lower. Or, or scale the rate of playback so that it's slower, which is perceived to be uh, lower, and then to the right of the iPad will be higher, higher sounds. So let's just take a listen here. Okay, and they're all pretty low here because this rate went considerably lower. So if I just take this and go up maybe to like Let's just try to max value to what happens. What if I change the range of this rate? Say I want to go to six. So now I can go up to six times the rate of playback. I'll go all the way up there so we can hear it. So that gets higher. What if I want to go, I don't know, let's go crazy. Let's go all the way to 12. See what happens. Some nice high-end crispy beeps, mechanical sounds here. Cool, so you can see how I can change this all really quickly. If I like this, I kind of like it high, and then come over here and roll the dice again. I give every sample, again, its own, a new release time and a new attack time. So I've got a new little playground here. I can also change the rate in real time. Cool. So hopefully you're getting the the sense of the, of the power here. I've done all this all in real time, creating in real time too. So you can see no no editing the video to to get to this. Um, incredibly powerful. And if I wanted more, um, it's it's pretty easy. All I'd have to do is come in here. I can replicate and change. Why stop at ten? I have ten fingers, but this might be a good opportunity to you know go up to fifteen and. Uh, Hey, Mom, can you help me with this sound design? Uh, le lend me a hand here, quite literally. So then if I do 15, and then I change my collect message here, 1 through 15, 
it, uh, it'll come up and allow me to have 15 fingers down on the iPad. All right, and then I mentioned that you could change if I put this raid parameter in to the special events, then I don't have to have them all, all the samples controlled by the same rate, just like I had the attack time and release time and all the other parameters. I can have rate be its own thing as well too for each sample and again exponentially grow my options and capabilities. So hopefully this uh, helps you out a bit. It's a lot more fun than dupe and slapping every every file in your digital audio workstation, creating a new fade in, a new fade out, and a pitch shifting uh, each sample. We can perform these sounds in real time, create an immense amount of samples very quickly, and have a lot of fun doing it. So that's uh, that's one technique I really enjoy, and I, I hope you can see the value in that. All right, so there you have it. A relatively quick look and step-by-step -step tutorial about how to generate sounds algorithmically in Kima and have the ability to perform them and express them in real time, something that you typically can't do in a digital audio workstation. And now that we have this structure of a sound, I can just simply go back in there and change my source samples, as I've talked about in other videos, and I arrive at an entirely new palette of sounds. So because I have that structure there already in place that I, I built, I've set myself up to have a lot of uh, flexibility in the future. Imagine that same sort of idea or trying to do that same sort of idea in your digital audio workstation. You have this massive session with all these sound effects, uh, sounds of samples, and then you just want to replace every single one of them with something else. There's, there's no way to do that that I'm aware of. You would have to start over from scratch. That structure of the way the sound behaves isn't there uh, as it is how we've made in Kima. So I'm just trying to get across the idea of this immense flexibility and immense uh, power as well as the ability to manipulate them and perform them in real time. It's, it's incredibly satisfying and very rewarding uh, as you start to build your Kima sound library. Now to be fair, I did have all those samples I recorded already on my disc and they were read readily available. But that's probably something you already have or you have a third party library or whatever. You have something to get started. Okay, but once you do and you get them in there, you can see just how quickly you can arrive at original sound effects by manipulating something that's already in existence. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, get involved, ask questions, and tell me, was this useful? Or maybe I'm nuts and, and this is not a, a sensible way of working. I don't know, but I immensely enjoy it and I hope, uh, I hope it was useful to you and we'll see you in the next video. What did you say you needed?